Rahim. This is part B of the seventh lecture of Descriptive Statistics and Islamic Approach. In the previous lecture, 7A, we discussed the World Bank data series on exports and growth rates, and we analyzed them separately. In this lecture, we will put the two together to see if there is any relationship between the two. The findings seem to be very clear. There is, in fact, no relationship between these two series. We ask, how do we rank these countries in terms of growth, for example? So which are the high growth countries and which are the low growth countries? The problem is created because we have growth rates over a very long period of time from 1960 to 2019, and the growth rates fluctuate a lot. For example, in a small period of time, if we look at just two countries, Turkey and Thailand, from 1993 to 2001, there are... Um, four years in which Thailand was doing better in terms of growth and in the remaining five Turkey was doing better so which one has higher growth we can't really say as we have studied earlier when you have multi-dimensional criteria when you have many indicators you cannot combine them into one indicator without some subjective uh, some some subjective criteria so for example if we treat recent periods uh, give recent periods more importance or we look at the highs and the lows or we treat all periods equally all of these possibilities make sense according to different objectives and they will give different rankings so the first issue is how do we rank the countries how do we know which are the high growth countries to this problem we propose a very simple solution let's just take the median growth so in the example that we have given there are nine years of data and uh, with many different growth rates for Turkey. Uh, so the middle uh, growth rate is 6.6%. Four years, Turkey had higher than that and four years it had below that. So we take 6.6% as the median growth rate for Turkey for these years. Similarly, Thailand, if you look at all nine years, 5.6% comes out in the middle. Uh, four years are above and four years are below. So this is a very simple way to combine all of these um, about 60 years of growth rates into one number and that one number can then be used to evaluate the countries now we can make many arguments that this is the right number or this is the wrong number but uh, we are doing what is called exploratory data analysis let's just try it and see what happens a picture of what we are trying to do and how we are doing it we look at a fragment of the table. In this table, we have um, about uh, eight countries, and we have data going from 71 to 2019. Many of the columns of data have been hidden. The period from 60 to 70 has been hidden, and the period from 73 to 2014 has been hidden just to make this fit on the screen. So we see that there is lots of missing data. The blank spaces show missing data for the growth rates. And this is a bit strange because when you look at the GDP data, you have data for all the years, for all the countries. So we could actually calculate the growth rate. But the um, WDI data set only gives growth rates for these years, which you can see. So anyway, uh, what we do is we'll take all of the years from, in, in column E in Excel, you have the 1960 data, and in column BL, you have the 2019. So if you look at the top right corner, the median column, the first entry for Jamaica says median E4 to BL4. So it, it takes the fourth row and it takes the entry from 1960 to 2019. And that's the what the colon does. It, it takes all of those numbers and it takes the median. But in practice, it only takes the median of these four numbers because this, that's only data available unless there is some data in the hidden uh, period. Similarly, for Palau, we take the median in the fifth row. And so for all of the countries, we get one number by taking the median over all of the available data. We can use this one number to rank all of the countries according to the median growth that they achieved over these 59 years. And when we do that, the results are shown. The top 20 countries are shown in the first three columns here. 
on the table. So Ethiopia is the absolute top. It has a median growth rate of 9.39%. This means that over the 60 years, in, in the years for which we have data, half of them Ethiopia had higher growth rates and half of them Ethiopia had lower uh, growth rates. China has the second highest growth rate at 8.62%. That again means that for um, 30 years it had more than that and for 30 years it had less than that. And the rank of the country is the, uh, is the ranking. So there are a total of 171 countries for which we have data on growth. So Ethiopia has rank 171. It's at the absolute top. And China has 170. Similarly, we can do exactly the same thing for the export to growth rate ratio. We can rank the countries. Again, this export to growth ratios is uh, over 60 years and it has a lot of variation so we can't easily rank the country so we can just take the median export to growth ratio as our criteria if we do that then it turns out that virgin islands comes out at the top it has a 207 percent median export to uh, growth ratio how can you get 200 percent well if you have a small country uh, the exports uh, can be larger than your GDP because your GDP is exports minus imports and if imports exports are both large then X minus M can be small but X itself can be very large. So here Virgin Isles is at the absolute top. There are 201 countries for which we have data, many more than we, we have data for growth and so Virgin Island comes out with rank 201 and then San Marino comes out at rank 200. Singapore has rank 199 and so on. So these are the top 20 countries with respect to growth and the top 20 countries with respect to exports. Now one thing uh, interesting to look at is that there is no overlap. The fastest growing countries are not in the list of the fastest export, the largest exporting countries and the largest exporting countries are not in the top 20 for the um, for the growth rates. So it means that there is apparently not much um, overlap between these two criteria. There is also one more interesting thing. Nobody has heard of Ethiopia as being a fast grower, it seems. But actually, uh, there is a problem that the data is available on Ethiopia only from 2012, 2011 or onwards. And for those five years from 2012 to 18, Ethiopia didn't spectacularly. It was ranked near the top of the world for growth. One of the interesting things about Ethiopia is it didn't uh, pursue an export oriented strategy. So uh, exports were very bad, but still Ethiopia managed to do extremely well in terms of growth rate. So we see immediately that to have high growth rates, it's not necessary to pursue an export led growth strategy. We can similarly look at the bottom 20 countries with respect to these two criteria, growth ranking and exports. And again, in the bottom 20, there is no overlap. A very bad performance with respect to growth uh, doesn't lead to a very bad performance with respect to exports and vice versa. So uh, uh, one thing that's clear is that at least at the top and the bottom, there is no overlap between the worst and the best uh, growth uh, ranked growth rate countries and the worst and the best export uh, oriented countries. Uh, one thing to note for uh, later uh, part of the lecture is that we have ranked the countries from 1, 2, 3 up to 171 for the uh, growth rates and uh, from 1 to 201 for the exports. The larger number gets the higher rank. Uh, this is um, maybe a little bit um, different from the students where the highest score is ranked number one. Uh, the highest score is ranked the highest rank. Uh, so there's a little bit of difference in convention here. So because uh, there are 171 countries for which we have growth rate data and 201 for which we have uh, export to GDP ratio data, uh, instead of looking at ranks, we can look at percentile ranks. Percentile ranks divide the rank by the total number of countries so that the top country has rank 100% and the 
and the bottom country has rank one uh, percent or two percent, depending on the uh, number of countries. So uh, the point is that this gives us the score of each country with respect to the objectives. Now we will look at both of the scores for a selected group of countries. So here we look at the top 20 and the bottom 20 countries according to growth rate ranking. So if you look at the um, top 20 on the right side, it's Ethiopia to Mozambique. They have ranks from 100% to 88%. This is just the how they rank in growth. This is not the growth rate itself. It's just the ranking. Ethiopia is number one, China is number two, and so on. Uh, look at the export to growth ranks, and you see that <clears throat> Ethiopia has terrible exports. It's 4.5%. Uh, it's worse than 95% of the countries. And similarly, for many other uh, groups, uh, you have a, a very bad ranking on exports combined with a very good ranking on growth. One exception is, for example, Djibouti. Djibouti has 96% in growth and 98% in exports. So it's doing good on both growth and exports. But uh, there are also countries which are doing very badly in exports, doing good on growth. and So it's a completely mixed picture. So there does not seem to be any relationship between growths and exports. We have been only looking at top 20 and bottom 20. But here is a plot of all the countries, the percentile ranks for growth rates and the percentile rank for exports to uh, GNP ratio. As you can see, for every growth rate, uh, like if you look at the 20% growth rate, uh, sorry, the 20 percentile rank in terms of growth rates, the export varies from the top to bottom. So it is not that if you have higher growth ranks than the uh, export ranks are, uh, are higher. In fact, the, this, uh, this shows that over the entire spectrum, there is simply no relationship between percentile growth rank and percentile export rank. There is another way to look at this whole problem. Instead of looking at global comparisons, let's just look at one country by itself. So by itself means that given, uh, for example, we're going to look at Korea. We're going to look at the periods in which Korea was growing fast relative to its own record, not relative to the globe. And similarly, uh, we're going to look at the periods in which Korea was exporting a lot. So we want to know if within a country's uh, own data set, whether the high growth periods correspond to the high export periods. So this may be true even if uh, what we have already discussed is true, that is, uh, with respect to the global patterns, uh, the high exporters are not the um, fastest growing countries and vice versa. But maybe within one country, periods of high growth correspond to periods of high export. So this is what we will look at next. Look at one case, the case of Korea. Uh, and we see that in this scatter plot, the X axis gives the growth rate. When the growth rate was the worst, <clears throat> which was below minus 5, <clears throat> exports were pretty high. And in the periods of very high growth, uh, near 15%, you have uh, very low exports and also very high exports. So at nearly every uh, level of growth rate, the exports vary a lot from being very high to very low. And generally speaking, the, uh, the graph seems to show a downward trend, that is the highest growth rates come in the intermediate period of uh, uh, in intermediate set of growth rates, highest exports. And similarly, for the highest growth rates, we have uh, intermediate levels of exports. So there is, no, uh, there is no relationship between high growths and high exports for Korea. So based on this data analysis, what are the conclusions that we can arrive at? So there are many potential criticisms that could be made. Maybe we use the wrong series. There are uh, really more than 10 export series. And uh, similarly, there are more than 20 different GNP type series. So we could use uh, more data, better data, other data. We could also use, we haven't used any model, models. We are using directly 
the data itself. We could construct models, and this is the standard procedure. We construct models for growth, and then we fit the data to the models, and then we use the models to assess. So uh, what we did was a direct analysis of the most relevant data sets available in the WDI. And this shows no relationship between exports and growths. And so at this point, I think the burden of proof is on the other side to try to explain why uh, the direct analysis does not lead to any relationship. Uh, one more thing that is worth noting is that model-based analysis actually creates a pattern for the data. It says that this data comes from a certain model. So it doesn't look at the specific data. It looks at the big picture. And in the big picture, the particular data points, the singularities get lost. There is no one country which is exceptional. Like, for example, we considered the case of Ethiopia. So Ethiopia will not be there in the, in the model because all of the countries are following similar uh, patterns which are fitted by the model. So the models actually hide a lot of uh, important characteristics of the data. In the very last point, we discuss uh, a meta-analysis. Why are we discussing this theory of export-led growth? So uh, in fact, statistics is the art of making arguments with numbers. So when you are making arguments, you should know the context. Where did this question arise? Who raised this question? Why did they come to this conclusion? And who is in favor? Who, who would like to see a yes answer? So these are all elements of rhetoric. So we can't go into the depth of this, but very simply, there is um, a phenomena that took place over the 20th century that uh, a number of Asian economies made a transition from agricultural to industrial. In fact, the whole of the world, uh, the poorer countries in the world were trying to do this, but only a few succeeded. So the question is, why did these countries, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, Korea, uh, etc., succeed? How did they manage to uh, reach industrialization? So when you look at the big picture, you see that all of these countries at some point or the other were big exporters. So one very simple um, thought occurs that maybe it was this exports that did it. But actually, uh, this is a oversimplified and monocausal exp uh, explanation. Monocausal means just referring to one cause. In fact, growth is a very complex phenomenon. It requires coordinated efforts in multiple dimensions. It cannot be reduced to one uh, single thing. So basically, the data shows quite clearly that growth is not uh, due to just one factor. In fact, it doesn't seem to have any relationship at all to growth performance.